Hello, I'm Dr. Chip Cooney with the Animal Hospital of Statesville. Just like people, dogs can get skin cancer. Kyle's going to ask some of the questions our clients most want to answer about skin cancer, and I'll give you the best answer that I have for that. Um, early detection obviously being very, very important. Okay, what kinds of skin cancer can dogs get? So, so dogs get very similar um, skin cancers to what we get. We see melanomas in dogs. Uh, mast cell tumors in dogs, basal cell tumors, squamous cell carcinomas. So there are many, many different types of skin cancers we have to deal with. Okay. What can I do to help prevent skin cancer in my dog? So some of these, very little, but the best thing, just like in us, is staying out of the sun. Um, providing shade for your pet. Um, the great thing is the, the coats in dogs tend to be very thick and therefore acts as a natural sunscreen. So in many dogs it's not a huge issue except maybe on the nose, around the eyes. Um, but for our thin coated dogs or our white dogs, um, we actually have owners that will use um, sunscreen on the pets. Now, sunscreen important, sunscreen without zinc oxide. So there are sunscreens made for dogs, marketed for dogs, um, kind of like for kids, um, that do not have the zinc oxide in them um, because we don't want the pets licking and taking that in, okay? Um, and it tends to be quick drying as well, so they have a harder time getting it off. The, the problem is one of the big places we need it is on the nose, which is and exactly as soon as you where put they... it on the nose, here comes the tongue. So, you know, we just do as best we can and keep them out of the sun, especially in the middle of the day, you know, the, the 10 to 4 time frame when the sun's at its worst. No tanning beds. No tanning beds. Yeah, and he kind of cheated and answered my next question, which is, can ah. I put sunscreen on my dog? Yes, you can, but it needs to be dog sunscreen. It needs so to be it appropriate have sunscreen. The icky zinc in it. <laughs> so, what are the symptoms of skin cancer in dogs? So, most of the time you'll see a lump or a bump or a raised issue, an area that, that may cause issue. Um, we'll see hair loss. Um, sometimes it's inflamed or crusty or scabby. Um, honestly, just an abnormal, abnormality, yes, abnormality of the skin. Um, but usually you'll see some type of a, a lump or bump to it. So how common is skin cancer in dogs? I skipped a question, he's laughing at me. <laughs> so skin cancer is, is actually quite common. The good thing is that it's quite unusual for it to be really bad. So yes, we deal with some, some metastatic skin cancers or skin cancers that do spread other places, but the vast majority of our skin cancers do end up being benign, which is great. So are certain dog breeds more prone to skin cancer than others? There are, um, just like certain dog breeds are predisposed to cancer in general. You know, boxers and bulldogs are always at the top of the list for cancer and skin cancer is, is one of them. Um, pugs tend to get mast cell tumors fairly frequently. My dark coated breeds like dobies and schnauzers are bad about melanomas. Um, so there are some breed predispositions that, that go with this. Um, but that being said, any dog is predisposed to getting skin cancer. Okay. Is a skin cancer diagnosis a death sentence? Usually dogs? not. In fact, almost never um, is it a death sentence. Um, most of the time, surgery, we can get rid of these things. We can get good margins. In many cases, it's curable. Um, and we'll just kind of monitor for the future. But it's, it's rarely, quote unquote, a death sentence. So you talked about margins. So tumors in dogs can be removed, skin, skin tumors. By all means. And, and again, just like in people, we want to get enough skin around it where it's healthy. And we feel like we've gotten everything. We take, take these samples and we'll send them to the pathologist. To tell us about the margins, tell us what it is, and tell us what to expect. What does a skin tumor in a dog feel like? Depends on the type of tumor. <laughs> so some of them are very firm and hard, almost like a marble or something under the skin. Some of them are very soft because they have fluid in them. Um, and there's everything in between. So I can't tell you any specific type feel because they can feel any way they want to feel. It's just abnormal feel. How about that? So because of that, you need to do testing on it to make sure it's benign and not cancerous. So Correct. frequently, if we have a, a skin mass on a dog, we'll do what's called a needle aspirate. And we do these in the clinic. We'll poke a needle in there and try to suck some of the cells out of it, squirt it on a slide, process the slide, stain the slide, look at it under the microscope. 
And I tell people in the vast majority of cases, well, I shouldn't say that, in many cases we can tell you exactly what it is. But in the vast majority of the cases we can tell you if it concerns us or not. And that's honestly what the big thing is. We want to know if it's concerning, then it needs to go. If it doesn't concern us, then we're okay monitoring it for the time being. Okay. So if you suspect your dog might have skin cancer, please call us for an appointment. So the longer skin cancer goes undetected or untreated, the more damage it may cause or the bigger it may get. That's correct. And <laughs> always, 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 the sooner the better. Getting Early these detection. Getting off before they have a chance to spread, getting them off before they get too large to remove. Um, you know, there are places on the body such as the, the torso, the abdomen, where we have plenty of skin to work with. But we get down here on the leg or the digits and there's just very little skin. Mm -hmm. So getting margins is all but impossible. So getting and dealing with those things when they're smaller, so we have a chance for at least some minor margins as opposed to later when we have no chance. And I think when it, often just go over your dog, feel your dog, pet them, and check all the spaces you don't necessarily pet all the time um, because things can sneak up on you and you may not feel it. But, you know, usually when you guys put your hands on them, you can feel something because you're looking, but a lot of people, I think, don't. I think you bring up an excellent point in that, that many times we, the owner, brings uh, a tumor to our, um, we, uh, so that we're able to notice it, uh, where we may not have found it before because the dog's coat is so thick, because the dog's anxious and a little nervous and is not being the best patient for us to palpate. So yes, if you notice something abnormal, we can surely I recommend having it, uh, bringing it in and having it checked. Yeah, oftentimes we're holding a dog, so we hold them in different ways and sometimes can feel those things that you never notice, but it works, it, you know, it works, works both, both ways. ways, exactly. And so early detection and treatment can save you worry because you know if you see something, you're going to worry about it. So get it checked out to ease your mind and um, possibly save your dog's life or digit or... Exactly. Skin. <laughs> okay. Thank you.